Yeah, we're back. We're live, 2 o'clock on a given uh, Thursday, and I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and uh, we do our regular show every two weeks called Military in Hawaii. And the military in Hawaii is very important now, you know, all, all focus right now, given Afghanistan. But we have a project demonstrating the loyalty of the American people, the American government to our veterans. And I think sometimes we forget our veterans, but this is a big project. And the Hunt Company is developing this project in Kalai Loa. And we have two of its executives with us here today, talk about the project and how it meets that need, that need to take care of our veterans, okay? Um, so we have Steve Colon and Thomas Lee. Welcome to the show, you guys. Thank you. Yeah, good to be here. So tell us uh, what Hunt Company is, where it is, uh, and what you're doing for it. Steve, you go first. Thanks, Jay, and uh, really appreciate you having us on here. Um, got some real good news to uh, share uh, with the veterans about some initiatives that we've got going on. Um, of course, uh, VA being most prominent. You know, Hunt's a, a large uh, real estate uh, company. We do a lot of development, uh, construction, financing, asset management. We're very involved in uh, with the military. In fact, we own uh, all uh, own and operate all the Navy housing here in Hawaii. Uh, which is about 6,800 homes. Um, we've been in Hawaii since uh, the early 90s, doing most building mostly uh, housing for uh, all services, all branch services. And then the division that I oversee, we've been very active here uh, for the last 18 years uh, when we were selected under a very, very um, um, uh, broad, uh, complex agreement with the Navy uh, to redevelop Fort Island. And redevelopment uh, and redevelop a whole bunch of uh, uh, what we call the underutilized Navy assets um, in and around the Pearl Harbor area, including Iroquois Point and the former Barbers Point Naval Air Station. Now that uh, work out at Barbers Point uh, has evolved over the years, and uh, we now are the master developer uh, for about 540 acres, and this is all located within the uh, former uh, air station. Uh, we, we acquired it initially under a ground lease. And what I like to tell people is we, we literally turned the lights back on because you had all of the buildings that encompassed that uh, air station closed down in the mid 90s, uh, which had been uh, vacated. All, them, the, uh, all of the in, insides had been stripped, copper, wire, plumbing, you name it. Uh, so with every single one of them now, we've uh, literally turned the lights back on. We've put um, tenants in there. We have now local businesses that are uh, operating out of there, uh, providing goods and services to the uh, West Oahu community, um, veterans and, and non-veterans. And- uh, This location is where the former Barbers Point? Yeah, that's correct. That's okay. correct. And uh, um, what we're gonna talk about here, of course, we're, we're always, you know, um, we're pretty proud of some of the work we're doing here. So uh, uh, we're always um, uh, always, always willing to, to talk about all the things that we've got going on over here in Hawaii. But specifically what we want to talk about today is a really exciting project. And that is uh, the new location of a West Oahu a VA, Veterans Administration Clinic. And this is- um, Before uh, you start with that, I want to introduce Thomas Lee. I think, you know, I think he's, he's nodding already. We have to get him involved in the conversation. So Thomas, I'll ask you the same question I asked Steve. What do you do for Hunt? Um, thanks, Jay. Uh, so my title um, essentially is Senior Vice President, but I've been working with Steve and with the division since 2006. Um, so I started shortly right before we acquired this property and have kind of been on this wild ride, you know, from, you know, taking this property that, you know, literally was dark at night to where it is today. So, you know, I've been involved in all different aspects of the property from, you know, asset managing, filling some of these buildings, and most recently have been involved in um, the revitalization and master planning and soon to be, uh, you know, new developments within this new community that we plan on bringing online very soon. I, I surmise that you're either an engineer or an MBA or both. Which one? Uh, actually, neither. <laughs> my, my father was an architect um, and a general contractor, so I, I kind of grew up in the trade and the industry, and um, I like working with my hands, so it's kind of how I got in the industry. Okay. How long have you been with the company? 
Uh, I'll be 15 years next month. God, that's amazing when you're still 26, huh? <laughs> well, I know you joined early. You really wanted to do it early. <laughs> so, Steve, so talk about the project for the VA. I guess that's really the focus of our show, and I would like to talk about the scope. And, and if you have some photographs, let's see them. Sure, and we'll have a we'll, we'll have some images here to show you in a second here. But um, and I think I had started. Uh, you know, uh, former Senator Dan Akaka had been advocating years ago. Uh, in his post uh, uh, on the uh, Senate Veterans Committee uh, to get a VA facility located out in West Oahu. We have 87,000 veterans here on Oahu. The uh, largest concentration of our vets are on the west side of Oahu. Yet you probably know that uh, the, uh, the entirety of our, uh, nearly the entirety of the veterans uh, medical services are provided over at Tripler uh, at the Army Hospital. That was never really intended to be the permanent location for the VA. Uh, that was only supposed to be a temporary accommodation many, many years ago. And so it was the center's desire to get a, uh, an, a complete standalone um, VA uh, outpatient clinic established. And while it took several years, um, the VA finally made the award uh, back in, in December, and we were fortunate to be selected um, as a developer to uh, go ahead and build that facility and then uh, go and uh, lease it back to the uh, to the VA. Uh, Thomas so, so is, is, now, this, is this project uh, a veterans hospital or is it hospital housing or is it a combination what? It's an outpatient clinic. Yeah. Okay. And, out, and this is, uh, you know, well, Thomas, let's, let's have you go explain the specifics of the building. So. Sure. Yeah. So Jay, to answer your question, it's it's categorized as a, a community-based outpatient clinic. So it will not have ER services, um, not open seven days a week, um, you know, six days a week, majority of the, op, you know, normal working hours, but it is not a hospital. So I, I heard Steve say that, uh, you know, tri Tripler was supposed to be um, short term, but um, not unsurprisingly, um, it, it um, not surprisingly, it took a long time to get this together. But now it's together. What's the need, however? Do you have an overflow of veterans who require VA assistance here in Hawaii? Thomas, do you want to take that? Um, sure. I mean, I, I think that need is, uh, you know, I, for folks that actually do use uh, the Tripler Medical Center, I think, you know, we had, you know, many testimonials um, in support given during our HCDA hearings, you know, from veterans who talked about, you know, not only just the, the needed services in other parts of the island, but, you know, this, um, just the age, aging facility in addition to, the, you know, the, the need for more parking there. And so, you know, I think build, building this, this new facility, you know, state-of-the-art contemporary modern facility out in West Oahu really, you know, um, uh, delivers it where, where it's most needed in West Oahu. I, I would yeah. guess that there's a lot of retired military here, and that means via, you know veterans, veterans administration beneficiaries. Um, and I'm and I'm just wondering, um, you know, are, are they are they being turned away at Tripler? Uh, no, no, uh, Jay. They're they're uh, you know the I, I don't want to insinuate that the uh, veterans care here is inadequate. What I want to emphasize is the Tripler facility has completely been overtaxed. Um, they, they are, that facility was built years ago and the number of patients it is serving, I'm told, is about three times what it's designed for. There is no, they have to do valet parking. They can't, it, they just, it, it is absolutely completely overwhelmed. Uh, and they, they really um, needed to, they need to help the VA get, more health care closer to where the veterans actually live. Um, so part of this is to not have everybody have to go to um, Tripler. It's, it's pushing these, these services out into the communities where the veterans are. And I think that's a, that was a big, big uh, part of the impetus for this. It sounds like a, a wonderful project for them and for the state and for, for all of us. Um, was, was there... Um, you know, was the state involved in, in lobbying for this? Were veteran veteran organizations involved in lobbying for this? Was our delegation involved in lobbying for this? 
Uh, all of the above, our delegation was very involved. In fact, you know, Senator Hirono sits um, on the Senate um, committee that's responsible for veterans, uh, veterans Affairs. So she uh, was a tireless advocate in ensuring that Senator Akaka's you know, legacy was fulfilled here. Senator Schatz um, on the Senate Appropriations Committee was also very helpful and influential in ensuring that the, um, the, appropriate, the dollars required to make this happen were um, appropriated. Uh, so they were very involved. Uh, it, this, this project really had a broad uh, community uh, support. And, and Thomas mentioned uh, a, a while back um, HCDA, uh, HCDA is, uh, stands for the Hawaii Community Development Authority. That's the redevelopment agency that's overseeing the redevelopment of all of Harbors Point, now Kaleloa. And uh, this, this uh, clinic is going through, had, went through a um, development approval process with uh, HCDA and all of the, the, um, the, the feedback was very, very positive. I don't think there was anybody opposed to this. It was all folks in support. I can't imagine anybody being opposed to it, really. So, um, you know, Thomas, what's the size of the project? I, my, my reading tells me it was, it's pretty big. Um, it can handle a lot of people. How, how big is it? Um, so, Jay, the, the size of the building um, is almost 100,000 square feet. It's about 90,000 square feet gross, uh, which includes common area and, and other open space. Um, you know, at its full capacity, you know, there's 528 spaces. And so it's, um, it's designed to handle, you know, a few hundred patients a day, in addition to the couple hundred employees that will be working on site. Um, in terms of the community benefits that provides, I mean, we're, we're extremely excited about, you know, building this uh, clinic not in, in Kalailoa and excited about, you know, the, the benefits that it will provide to the West Oahu area um, by providing, like I said, some, a lot of those critically needed services, you know, some of which will be, you know, primary care, mental health, uh, dental, pharmacy, x-ray, um, and other types of specialty care that the veterans need. Mm. So uh, is it in, in construction right now today? Nope. Uh, so we are still um, in the design process with the VA. Uh, you know, we're getting close to submitting our plans for permits and um, we're hoping to start construction. Actually, the, the development timeline for this, um, is, uh, for this project has been dictated by our lease agreement with the VA. And so we do have a very strict timeline to deliver it, which um, obligates us to a completion date of sometime in late summer of 2023. Mm -hmm. And so in order to meet the timeline, we have to start construction by around November of this year. And so we, we will, we hope to have a ground blessing um, before the end of the year. Well, two questions about COVID I'd like to ask you guys. I mean, is COVID going to affect your timeline for one thing? Um, you know, we're right now there's a surge, um, seems to be getting worse. Uh, some companies um, are changing the way they do business. Some employees are not hungry to come back. I don't know about the construction industry. It did very well in the first part of COVID. Call it COVID one. <laughs> yeah, Jay. Um, you know, that may affect that may affect uh, COVID two though. Yeah, I, you know, Jay. The as you said, uh, that you know, construction workers like to they like to work. They like to build. And uh, during uh, COVID, as, as you know, they've been. It, this has been a very, very busy industry. Um, I, I would say, uh, you know, like Thomas said, you know, we are planning on breaking ground. We do need. We will be delivering the facility um, in two years. And the only thing that I could see that could potentially disrupt that would be if there was a, a large-scale COVID-related supply disruption. Um, you know, you're we're well aware of what happened last year and some of the. Um, problems that that's caused. Uh, you know, what I'm hearing is that uh, the system is now getting stabilized again and back to kind of equilibrium and we should be okay. I mean, we, as you know, with COVID, all bets are off. Uh, but certainly um, from our standpoint, you know, even with all of the COVID protocols in place, we don't see, uh, you know, any impact on our uh, either timing or ability to deliver the project. Oh, a lot of the uh, troops coming back from uh, Afghanistan and Iraq um, 
will be in Hawaii, I think. Uh, Hawaii is like a favorite retirement spot, not only for the, the senior officers, but also the enlisted guys. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they're going to come back and some of them are going to be, I regret to say this, but some are going to be at the low end, maybe homeless. Uh, they won't be able to find jobs and so forth. And they're vulnerable in that way to um, catching COVID uh, now and probably for a while in the future, um, you know, because it, it'll go endemic before it goes away. And so the question is, what role would this facility play with veterans who have, uh, who have been exposed to, uh, been infected by COVID? Well, um, you know, this facility will be built in, it delivered in, you know, two, about two and a half years from now. So, you know, my, my answer there is, I think it's going to depend on where COVID is in two and a half years and where we are on a solution um, to COVID. I mean, right now there are veterans uh, medical uh, 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 benefits and facilities available. Uh, right now they can go to um, Tripler, uh, to, to the VA um, you know, up in uh, Tripler. And, uh, and there are also, um, you mentioned veterans homeless. There are veterans homeless facilities out uh, right nearby where this clinic is gonna be in Kaliloa. These are um, operated by the state veterans administration as well as uh, private operators. So there are veterans homeless outreach um, and medical services available right now on island. You know, um, I have friends and relatives who've been in the service and qualify for VA benefits. And, um, you know, I know there's been criticism even during the time when Daniel Akaka was chair of the Veterans, Veterans uh, Administration Committee, Congress uh, in the Senate. But, but um, the, the feeling I get is that Veterans Administration provides excellent service. And in general, they are very caring for their for their troopers and beneficiaries, um, and I and I, I sense this is part of that. I mean, the medicine is is excellent in the view of many, and it is available on a very aloha basis in the view of many. Uh, have Have you had discussions? Is that part of the theme of this project? Well, I again, I think this project is just going to continue and perpetuate that. Um, you know, uh, obviously. Um, uh, quality medical care for veterans is a national priority. It's a national uh, necessity. And so it's it's uh, something that I believe this administration, every administration will will make a priority uh, on. and 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 this facility is going to be state of the art. this This facility is going to uh, be able to offer up the best of those. So um, any uh, any any positive, um, comments you've received in the past on the quality of medical care with, for veterans, which I would um, endorse, um, I believe will continue to be uh, perpetuated here. Yeah. The other thing is, um, you know, a state-of-the-art facility, a big facility like this, is part, in my mind, of, um, of a sort of a community caring. What I mean is, if, if I see a veterans administration, if I see a veteran who enjoys good service, who is cared for by the government, and therefore the people. It enhances my own patriotism. It enhances my own view that, uh, my, or in some cases, my own wish that the government takes care of its veterans. This is really part of our country. It's part of, our, we cannot afford to forget them or abandon them. And to the extent that we care for them, uh, then we're really making a statement of, of patriotism. So I think you'll probably find that the community in general would be posit positively affected by a project like this, perhaps even more than just ordinary housing, you know, or institutional construction for the military or the government in general. I think it's it's special when you're talking about the veterans and it has an effect on people and we need that. Therefore, we need to have shows like this so the public can understand how important it is, not only to them, but us. Thoughts? Well, um, Jay, uh, it's interesting that you bring that up because one of the tremendous benefits I think that's going to come out of this is going to be the quality of the jobs that this is going to provide. You know, you just mentioned these construction projects are, are temporary. You build them and then you move on to another construction project. Um, this this is going to create 
um, full-time, high-quality medical um, professional uh, job opportunities uh, for folks who live on the West Side. Um, and, and I think it's, it's just, it's gonna be great to have this over there. We all know that's a need that's gonna help keep more people here in Hawaii. It's gonna uh, provide um, healthcare for veterans um, for, you know, for where they live, which is predominantly uh, out on the West Side. And like I said, it's uh, uh, ev everything about the project I think is you know, pretty positive. Uh, Thomas, do you remember the numbers on how many jobs this will create full-time? Um, uh, off the top of my head, I don't. How about I, lots? Jobs, uh, yeah. How about lots? Lots. Um, Thomas, I, I, I want to ask you another question along the same mm -hmm. lines, though. Um, you know, it's we we have a very what do you want to call it? Um, uneven job market these days. Sometimes we have too many jobs and too few applicants. Sometimes the other way around. And when you're talking about um, you know specialized jobs like medical support jobs and med medical doctor jobs uh, and medical administrative jobs. Um, there could be a real problem in, in filling the ranks here in this uh, center. So is that is that part of the Hunt Company um, contract? I mean, are, are you going to actually manage this place or just build it? And if, if you're not going to manage it, who is going to manage it? And uh, what what is the anticipation on not so much the jobs, but filling the jobs. Right, that's a good question, Jay. So um, our, our goal in this development is purely as a lessee or lessor, I'm sorry. So um, our, our obligation there is to uh, design, finance, construct, and maintain the building, but the operations and maintenance and other maintenance of the building will, will be done by the VA. So uh, in terms of filling um, the, the positions, um, We've been told, you know, it will be a mixture of, of moving um, some folks over from Tripler to this new facility, uh, but there will also be new, new you know, these are also um, accretive positions. And so, you know, the positions within the VA will expand. And um, from what I've been told, they will be hiring, um, you know, from mainland, uh, you know, and, and wherever the, you know, their talent is for um, their specialty care. And, you know, and I've been learning kind of throughout our design process that, the, the needs and services that are, you know, um, soldiers required, you know, has been changing with, you know, different deployments, there's different types of needs. And so um, those types of needs are, are filled with, you know, new doctors that they hire. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Yeah, well, I think, I think it's important that we, um, you know, we take a, we scope that out. Because if you were to train um, people who would staff this facility, you'd have to start early. You know, yeah. if it's going to be done in the, in the, in the summer of 2023, uh, it'd be a good idea to start doing that right now. And maybe UH West Oahu could participate in that. Maybe the medical school in Kaka'ako, you know, also on HCDA land, right, um, could participate in that and, uh, and provide a whole new sector of the economy. This is not a bad idea. And, you know, of course, uh, the training would, would, would be useful not only in, uh, in the VA system here, but elsewhere. Um, so it seems to me that one of your messages or one of the management's messages ought to be, hey, you guys, start, start training people now because there are good jobs here. And uh, this is the kind of job that you could, you know, you could use anywhere, including outside the country for that matter. You know? um, speaking outside the country, I wonder, you know, it seems to me that a veteran who applies for medical care at a given institution, he doesn't have to live in the neighborhood. He could be from anywhere. You could have veterans who are in Asia, Europe, who, who really like this place. They like the state of the art. Hopefully they like the staffing. So they'll come here and be part, be part of the um, you know, institution that you're building. Isn't that true? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not just a, uh, it, it's, for, uh, it's for veterans. It's for veterans regardless of where they are, where they live. It's it's uh, it's it's healthcare for for those who've served. Well, let's let's uh, drill down a little bit. You have some photos. I, I think we saw one sure or two. Do. Let's let's see some more, and you can tell us about them. Uh, so this is a site plan. Um, it might be maybe if we start one slide back. 
Eric. So here we go. So that, that's the rendering of our uh, the front corner of our building. Um, for folks that aren't uh, necessarily familiar with the, the lay of the land in the region out there, um, this the site of this VA clinic will be um, located on the northwesternmost corner of the former Barbers Point Naval Air Station. So if you look at that from a, a regional aerial, it, it is literally the, the piece of land just Mackay of the Apple Costco. So if you were right. to stand Apple Costco, uh, right. you could rock at this site. And it's just, just Mackay of that site located on the intersection of uh, the existing uh, FDR Avenue, as well as um, a new road that Hunt will be building shown on the right side of this uh, graphic here, which is gonna be the Kamakila extension. And so the, the current Kamakila Boulevard um, terminates right where this site is right now. And um, essentially this 50 acre parcel will be bisected by this um, you know, 100 foot right of way, which will be uh, newly constructed and will be built to service this clinic. Anything next. else? What, 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 what next photo uh, there? Yeah, so some of the other, um, I guess, features of the site, you know, th this building is going to be um, green building certified. Um, our architect for the project is Ferraro Choi and Associates, and they were selected, uh, you know, as a recognized leader in sustainable design. A um, couple of their not you know, no notable projects that um, folks may be aware of is, you know, the, the NOAA building on Ford Island, uh, which is a lead platinum building. Um, I believe they also uh, were the architect for the Culinary Institute at KCC, which was recently um, constructed as well as, you know, uh, doing some work for Queens and uh, um, other medical facilities on island. So, you know, did this host um, or, you know, the, the requirements of the VA did require us to do a green building certification under a, what a program called Green Globes. And so, um, you know, the site plan that was shown in the previous graphic, you know, um, uh, showed, you know, the, the plethora of trees on the site to, to counteract the, the, the dearth of parking there. You know, the, the VA required twice the amount of parking that the ACDA zone code allows. And so to combat the, the uh, mitigation of having this big black parking lot, you know, we, you know, a few hundred trees are going to be planted on the site to, heat, to combat that heat island effect amongst a handful of other kind of green and sustainable features for the for the building okay i guess that oh, i guess that uh, ends the photos i want to drill down and, uh, and ask you now uh you know what the challenges are uh you know you're not going to just sit there and watch this thing grow you have to handle certain issues what issues do you have to handle uh, going forward for the next two years well, I'll start, and then Thomas can can drill down a little bit. Um, the a lot a lot of the issues we are have already mitigated a lot, but I would say you know um, first off, uh, we have a very very tight timeline, and you you addressed uh, a you know a potential issue there. You know, COVID has created a lot of unknowns that didn't exist back when uh, this project was first being solicited. So we're watching carefully to see what's happening with uh, the supply chain. And, you know, being here, here in Hawaii, you know, we're kind of at the end of the line there. So uh, when, when, uh, they're, uh, when the factories are not able to produce the construction materials on the mainland, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to be the first to not get them. <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, we're certainly watching the supply chain carefully. Um, we're also working closely with our uh, general contractor to make sure that, you know, our, our required labor ability is there. Uh, the, the, you know, Hawaii is notorious for uh, very, being very uh, diligent and uh, plotting in um, uh, not granting approvals for, uh, for construction projects. Um, I've never heard it put quite that way, Steve, but <laughs> I, I compliment you on, on the, the uh, euphemistic way you put that. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jay. I was trying to, uh, trying to come up with a nice way to say it, but, uh, you know, um, when in a situation like this, we just, we don't have the time. We don't really, uh, and we, nor do we feel that it's really appropriate to, um, uh, for a project that, if this is a federal project, 
Uh, it is, uh, it, it, it's, it's guidelines in terms of design and how many patients they want to be able to serve. The equipment that's going to be in there are, are all they're, they're prescribed by the feds, by the, the VA here. So what we've been trying to do is um, to uh, really bring uh, as much of these facts as possible to the community stakeholders and the political leaders there to um, encourage, uh, you know, a timely approvals, timely approvals from the on the permitting from HCDA, timely approvals on getting building permits from the county. So uh, the, the, I would say, you know, those are two of the biggest things that we're watching closely. Anything Thomas, else? what else? I don't know, I would say you captured everything um, pretty well, Steve, but I, you know, I, I think what we've also seen um, is, you know, during COVID, you know, there was, I wouldn't say a pause, but you know, a lot of, I think, smaller projects um, were kind of shelled for a little while. And what we've seen is the number of permits has increased, you know, um, massively, you know, right after when things started opening up again. And so what we're working with right now is, you know, building department and their staff who are still, I think a majority of them are still working from home. Um, and so even though the, the economy may be back in full swing, I think the, the agencies that are still kind of on the um, regulatory side really haven't caught up. And so um, we're doing our keep things on track, but I think where the difficulties um, lie ahead are uh, on the regulatory side. Are, are you fully funded uh, or is it some condition there? Um, you know, given, I don't know if you're a, a beneficiary of the uh, infrastructure bill or bills that are happening? Um, what's the size of your project? Um, it, 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 the, the project is going to be um, financed through uh, construction loans, kind of the typical way that we as developers get these projects done. So this um, uh, project is going to be financed by a, a mainland-based lender that has a lot of experience in financing uh, these type of uh, VA clinics. Now, um, we anticipate that that financing will close around the end of next month. So uh, in the meantime, in fact, for the past couple of years and, and, and certainly ever since we got selected um, full speed ahead since uh, uh, December, uh, we've been funding this, you know, the company's been, been funding what we call company um, equity. So um, we are... Uh, uh, we are all, we are, as we used to say in the Navy, you know, all engines ahead full, <laughs> in fact, all engines ahead flank, because uh, we're really going full speed on this um, right now. Uh, you know, we're very confident that the financing will come through uh, and uh, should be good to go there. You're, you're, you're Navy. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I think what I would add to that is, I, you know, from the government side, um, you know, the, the, the government is contributing some money towards like right. TI and an improvements and equipment that is fully funded as well as uh, an approved 15 year lease term. So the Congress has approved the VA to enter into a 15 year agreement with us to fund that whole rental stream. So from that perspective, it is fully funded. And, you know, as Steve alluded to, we're um, close to closing on the, the financing for the, the Yeah, well, this, uh, this is a common method of building military facilities, isn't it, these days? Um, you know, uh, a private company come in, you know, get financing, build it, lease it back for a period of years. This is what happens now, isn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't say not, certainly not universally. Uh, the VA has been doing this uh, on and off. Um, as you mentioned, the military, in fact, the military is the poster child for this type of uh, arrangement with respect to the military housing, it's really only the house, the all service branches have privatized the military housing where, uh, where they made a conscious decision and said, we as government are not, and we as military are not in the core business of providing housing. So what they decided to do is they outsource that, they outsource that to the real estate community. Um, we competed for that business. Like I said, we own the Navy housing. In fact, we're the largest owner of military housing in the country. And under those arrangements, uh, basically, we have the rights for 50 years to uh, own and operate uh, military housing. And that requires us to upgrade those buildings to the homes, to renovate them, make sure they're um, safe and secure for the um, soldiers and sail sailors and airmen 
uh, to live in. This is an, a classic example, this VA facility. We think you will see more and more of this. In fact, in Hawaii, uh, there's a pioneer of this type of arrangement. I talked about the Ford Island agreement that was done 20 years ago, but uh, you, you are right, Jay. This is more and more becoming common to see these type of um, uh, public-private partnership arrangements. Yeah, it all sounds very healthy and efficient. The only thing is, at the end of the day, uh, you, you've got to collect the rent as the owner of the building. Uh, that goes for housing and it goes for the VA. In the VA case, they're going to pay you for sure. Right. It's, it's a, that's that's um, you know good as gold. In the housing, I suppose it's uh, it's housing allowances. So that's also good as gold because that that will come from the government. Uh, on behalf of the tenants. Anyway, um, yeah, I, so I get the idea from your discussion, Steve, that you're a uh, veteran Navy, and um, I would guess you were a line officer. I would yes. guess you served here, and I would guess you are at least a commander. Am I right? Uh, you've got, you pretty much hit on all those. I'm a, a retired Navy captain. And captain, I did, I should, uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to under, underestimate you. <laughs> that's okay. It's that's, that's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. It's great to talk to you. I wish you well on this project. It's very important, not only for you and the Hunt Company, but it's important for the state and the country. And if I were you, I'd feel very proud in, in being part of it. Don't you agree, Thomas? Absolutely. <laughs> and Steve, what, what message would you leave with our, our viewers? Uh, well, uh, Jay, uh, again, thanks for having us. Uh, I, I hope you uh, you got a little bit of a feel for how uh, proud and excited we are about doing this project. Like I said, this is this is something that Senator Akaka, um, this was this was his dream. Uh, we're honored to be selected uh, to implement that vision. We're super excited uh, to be building this, uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you and a whole lot of others at the. Uh, ribbon cutting when we can be, um, we can proudly start delivering quality medical services to our veterans. So look forward to seeing you there. Yeah. After this show, put me on the list. Okay. Don't forget. I'll be there. Absolutely. <laughs> Steve Cullen and uh, Thomas Lee, thank you so much for joining us on the military in Hawaii. Great discussion, important project. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha.